is Janetta Springsmith. My location is Tennessee, and I've been listed in the directory since, ooh, that's a good question. So I've been in solo practice for about eight years. So I would say probably for eight years, more than likely. Uh-huh, seven to eight, mm-hmm. Yes, so um, I think there's lots that organizations can do to support mental health professionals in addressing burnout. Um, I think it starts more so with like the culture of the organization um, and ensuring that we don't have a, you know, grind culture, like that we reinforce the importance of rest and we have policies that are in place that support the importance of rest and have opportunities for them to, to check in, to, you know, ground themselves um, within the workplace and setting um, and incorporating like whether it be EAP benefits, whether it be mental health days, whether it be bringing people in who focus on wellness and teaching employees, you know, how to manage um, themselves, how to take care of themselves. I think all of those things um, can be helpful. I think it's overall having a culture where wellness is centered as a priority. This is a hot topic, right? Because self-disclosure self is one of those things that, you know, I think in a lot of traditional uh, settings or more like Western based, you know, um, settings, it's viewed as like you're a blank slate and your client is a blank slate and we need to show up like as robots and, you know, um, kind of be disconnected. Um, so I think there is some element of self-disclosure that helps to bridge that connection between you and your client it helps to normalize things. Um, but I think as clinicians, we need to be mindful um, of the why. Like, why am I self-disclosing? And when I when I think it, when it comes to therapy, self-disclosure needs to be reserved to if this disclosure is gonna be able to help my client um, feel more co connected and normalize something. Is this disclosure gonna be able to help my client understand themselves? a little bit more or is this disclosure going to help my client move forward um so i use um to kind of check myself <laughs> the acronym wait you know which is like why am i talking right so am i talking about this because i feel like i need to get something off my chest and i just whoo i just had a rough day so let me vent to you that's not what self-disclosure is intended for so when we can be mindful of the direction of what self-disclosure is for it's all about that client like helping them to be able to move forward or helping to open up the session so I can get information I need to be able to help this client move forward, then then I would say it's appropriate. I think another one too, one is wait, why am I talking? And then the other one is waste, which is why am I still talking? So you gotta be able to check yourself, you know, if you get caught up. So, you know, one thing I would say when we're looking to build that therapeutic alliance, we're looking to establish and build trust with our clients. Um, it's hard to trust what you can't see, right? So if I can't see you in your humanity, if I can't see you as like a human um, having imperfections, being flawed in areas, then how can I trust you with my innermost vulnerable parts? Right. So I think sometimes therapists focus so much on being perfect, checking every box, crossing every T, dotting every I. And that actually creates more distance, you know, with your clients. Um, so it does more harm than good. So I think when we're looking at establishing trust, we have I have to be able to see you. I have to be able to understand you to some degree and feel like if I share this with you, will you understand me? You know, will I not feel, have to feel shameful because I'm struggling with something? So I think therapists being able to like show that they're human um, and we have our own things that we're navigating to um, is really important in building and establishing trust. Oh, 
Ooh, we listen. I, I love working with new therapists because they're, you know, very eager and, you know, they want to hit the ground running. Um, but I always say, like, if I'm wanting to help a new therapist on their journey, that we can only take people as far as we're willing to go ourselves. Right. So making sure that we do the work, making sure you practice what you preach. So, you know, as you're talking to your client, you have to hear that first. Um, India Irie always says, like, the words that come from your mouth, you're the first person to hear them. And that applies for therapy, too. Right. So as you're communicating to your client, like, are you applying and listening? And do you really trust the process of therapy? So every therapist, I feel like, needs to have a therapist at one point or, you know, throughout their journey. And knowing that if I want to be effective, I have to be effective here before I'm able to be effective um, out here. So really keeping that, centering yourself with that.